Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another segment here at the South Texas Literacy Coalition. Um, I know it's been a while. We took a little bit of a two-week two, break, two, two week break uh, with our professors from UTRGV, but thankfully uh, we are back. We are better than ever, and uh, today we're going to be talking about hydration part two. So for those of you guys that have, those of you guys that have been tuning in uh, might know that we did a first part to the segment talking about different um different energy drinks like Powerade, um, Gatorade, and stuff like that, and talking about all of the nutrition facts behind uh, whether or not there are good alternatives to water for hydration. So today we're going to be talking about hydration part two with nobody other than Mr. Juan Paredes. <laughs> What's going on, Ms. Chong? Uh, nice to be here again. I know we took a little bit of a break. Uh, I guess we we're a little bit on a hiatus, if you will, uh, but I'm, we're glad to be back. We uh, did some research, or I did some research on some of these uh, hydration products, some powders, and a few other things as well, too. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what we mentioned, what Violeta mentioned uh, earlier about the part one, where you can find it, uh, in case you have questions, because there was a lot of that went into uh, that first part, right? There was a lot of uh, sugar content, carbohydrates content, different types of uh, sports drinks as well, too, uh, along with some others as well that help with uh, cramping and such. Uh, but this one, we're really going to focus on the best ones, my favorites, and the ones that I truly feel uh, hydrate, you know, the individual, the body, right? When we're doing some kind of vigorous activity, uh, hopefully longer than an hour. Of course, we'll also mention a little bit about water and a few other aspects of hydration. All right, so I guess uh, I guess we can begin. There it is. Okay, cool. So this is hydration talk 2.0, right? <clears throat> Myself and Miss Chung will be uh, discussing along with you guys. Uh, now, in case again that maybe you uh, missed the first part and you want to catch up, uh, all of these videos, I believe, uh, Miss Chung, correct, right? They're all available on your Facebook website. Yes, they're all available um, right after we do any type of Facebook Live. They are recorded and posted um, after we leave live um, on our Facebook page. Another place where you can find them as well is on our SouthTexasLiteracyCoalition.org, which is our webpage, our main official webpage. And we have a tab, a section called Health Literacy for Kids. Now, along with... Um, the PowerPoint presentation itself downloadable and the actual live video that we have on Facebook. We also have a lot of different activities that we have for kids that you can do at home, coloring pages, crossword puzzles, different videos for activities, um, examples of eat this, not that, which was a past uh, presentation that we did with Mr. Paredes as well. We also have available all of our past presentations we've done with Mr. Figueroa as well. So if you are new and you, this is the very first health literacy uh, live that you've seen, all of our past ones that we've done on health literacy are available on our website along with the downloadable PowerPoint. So um, yeah, so just go to our website if you can't find it on Facebook because we do have a few videos on Facebook, you might have to scroll through, but uh, if you wanna get straight to them, you can go to our website and look for health literacy for kids and everything should be on there. Yeah, absolutely. The first part, again, was great. Covered a bunch of different sports drinks, uh, a few uh, powders as well, too. Some energy drinks as well, too. A little bit of uh, the Monster Hydro and a few others. So in case you want to catch up on that, you can watch uh, this one first. You can watch that one first and then catch up later. Either way, uh, it gives you a lot of good detailed uh, information as far as hydration. Now, we before we move on, I just want to mention something really quick. I know uh, South Texas Literacy Coalition has helped me out with this um, uh, with this event last month, uh, we're having a blood drive coming up uh, on July 23rd and 24th at the Edinburgh Activity Center. Uh, if you can, you know, make an appearance, uh, go and you know, donate some blood. I know during this pandemic, a lot of people um, truly need. Uh, we already have a shortage already of blood, and then these people that truly need it, it's even worse right now with this pandemic. Uh, luckily, with uh, South Texas Literacy Coalition, their help, and a few others uh, that also aided me during this event, uh, Coach T, uh, Ivan Figueroa, uh, the clubs as well, too, that helped us out, <coughs> which are there, uh, we were able to, to uh, collect over uh, 80 donations uh, in two days. Now, that may not sound uh, like a lot, but uh, during this pandemic and given these times, uh, that is quite a bit. So if you get a chance, you know, go to that area during those times, you can schedule an appointment. Uh, we practice uh, the CDC guidelines, social distancing and such. Uh, and we'd appreciate uh, for you guys to go there. Also doing uh, the antibody testing as well, too. So if you believe that you may have had it, 
uh, within two weeks after your donation, you'll receive your results, whether it be positive or negative. Uh, along with that, too, they'll send you a little card that lets you know that you're a blood donor. You can keep this in your wallet. This is fantastic. It'll give you your name, obviously, uh, your scan, and also your blood type as well, too. They also give you one for your keychain as well. So, uh, and it lets you know just in case of an emergency, in case something happens, uh, that info is uh, readily available for medics or for anybody else. Uh, it's very helpful, actually. But enough with that. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see you guys there. Let's get started with our hydration talk, right? So let's get a little bit of a recap. Now, this is just a little bit of some recycled material that we've had, you know, before, right? Uh, how much water you should drink for males and females, whether it be in liters, in ounces, or in cups. And that's just a good guideline, a good basis of understanding for hydration. Now, if you're doing some kind of physical activity, you might need to up your intake a little bit more. Uh, but for the most part, this is just a basis uh, of, of, uh, of hydration. And we're talking about water here. We're not talking about any kind of sports drinks just yet. And we'll get to more of that in just a second. So again, this is just recycled material, just to kind of familiarize some people that may have not uh, been present for the part uh, for part one. And again, the recap of the uh, electrolytes. Now, not everybody goes and looks at a sports drink or a, a, what's it called, a powder drink. And let me see how much magnesium, how much potassium, how much chloride. You know, Valeria, I know, you know, you probably didn't do this. I didn't do this as well as well either. I would just go with, uh, let me go with my favorite brand, whether it's Gatorade or Powerade. And then uh, from there we go on, whether we get the zero, we get whether we get the G2, reduced sodium, reduced sugar, you know, whatever. But sometimes we don't focus in on some of these uh, electrolytes and how much they have, what the contents, uh, what contents they have and how much they have of them as well too, right? Yeah. want to make sure you understand that. And, 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 and yeah, I know we had talked about this last time too. Like, okay, well, let me go and check it out. Especially during this pandemic, <laughs> you just want to get in and out. Nobody's taking their time to read uh, labels. I know, Valeria, we just talked about this right before we went live. Yeah, I'm feeling like we've got it bad right now, especially with our second wave uh, in the Valley and in Texas. Right now, even uh, gro going to the grocery store is a little bit hectic, a little bit scary. Yeah. So uh, we've been trying our best, me and my family have been trying our best to do either delivery whenever it's free or uh, curbside services wherever we go to, if we go to Walmart, we go to HB or anything like that. And, uh, you know, apart from you, you don't really have one, the time to be able to look at the nutrition facts. And a lot of times you're limited to what, how many items you can put in your cart because it's curbside, because it's delivery. Sometimes there's a limit as to how many items you can have in your cart. So um, that's right now, the least of our worries is <laughs> yes. which one has less sodium, which one has less sugar, which one has higher electrolytes, which one, it, which one has more vitamin C. So right now it's a, it's a little bit hard to do your research when it comes to buying your groceries. So um, it, can, it can get difficult. Uh, thankfully, a lot of them provide you with images of the nutrition facts when you are um, ordering uh, your groceries and stuff like that. So some places are a little bit helpful with including the nutrition facts, nutrition facts as one of the images when you are searching up a product, but a lot of them don't. <laughs> yeah. And again, what are you looking for? Are we looking for this? I mean, sometimes, again, you know, even within our courses, when we take uh, myself that I take, I took nutrition classes and maybe you did as well, too, and a few other wellness classes and, and, and health management. I mean, sometimes, you know, there's just so much detailed information that, you know, we only leave one chapter for you know, for hydration. And, you know, it's a shame because, I mean, that's something that's so important, you know, down here as I'll get to the next slide. And I'm not too sure if you can see this. I stole this. Well, I didn't steal this. I, I, I took this from uh, Channel 23's, uh, their forecast, right? What's been going on? And I took this yesterday. Uh, and this is just the temperatures here uh, in Annenberg, right? We have 101, 97, 98, 96, 97, 90, you know, 93. You're just thinking like, oh, my God, like, wow, like these temperatures are high. Uh, and some of them are already in the double digits. But that doesn't include our heat index, right? And uh, and I'll leave this question for 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 you, Aledia, or anybody else, right? <clears throat> Like, you know, we, we talk about humidity and we talk about heat index a lot, but do you know what the average humidity is here in Texas? Just in, in Texas, right? This includes everything. Um, you want to take a guess, uh, take a shot at it? In Texas? In Texas. Oh, in Texas, I would. I know that it's higher in the valley, of course, because oh, yeah. we're, we're a little bit closer to a coastline. <laughs> sure. Uh, 
Absolutely. I know it's, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly, but I know for a fact that it's higher in the valley because we're closer to a coastline. Oh yeah. So in, te- so in Texas, just alone, we're about 65 to 70 uh, percent humidity. And this is just pretty much average year round. Now here in Edinburgh and the lower valley, our average, which is funny, uh, I say it's funny, but I'm like, oh my God, it's so hot, is 80%. 80%, which is crazy. I mean, just like you said, here in these uh, Gulf, Co- uh, Gulf Coast areas, you know, from Brownsville, uh, of course, to Harlingen, to Edinburgh and, and Mercedes, <coughs> and all those other areas in between, I mean, we're up to about 80%. So we're much higher than the average here, you know, in Texas. And for those of us that may not understand, um, for those of us that may not understand uh, how the heat index, you know, affects us, I have a graph right now that I'll show you. So I remember I had left this um, uh, this PowerPoint slide up last time, and you know, here when we do any kind of physical activity or we're working outside, especially myself, I love to be outside. Uh, I know you do as well too. You know, either going kayaking, some kind of recreational hiking, biking. Myself, I like to be outside uh, chopping wood, you know, cutting grass and such. Uh, but it's not uncommon for you to lose, you know, one to eight pounds, uh, you know, of water per hour. I mean, that's how, how bad it is, especially here, uh, here in the Valley. It's like, if you're going to cut the grass, you're going to cut it early morning and you're going to stop at about 11, unless this is your, your job, then, you know, obviously you have to work through it. But if not, if this is just something for your house, maybe work till about 11 or 12. And then we'll pick up again after three o'clock or four o'clock. And that's what I've been doing. And even so, you know, early in the morning, it's just so, so hot. And I'll tell you a story about <clears throat> after we did our, our part one hydration segment, I had kind of like a, uh, um, like an out of, I'm not going to say out of body experience, but I had this crazy experience uh, with this hydration food, which was amazing. Uh, and now I just can't stop. Uh, I just can't stop eating it, which is, uh, which is not bad. It's a fruit, but still. But anyways, let's continue. So let's go on for the heat index right here, right? So you look at the heat index and we can kind of see where we are, right? If we do just an average every day here in the Valley, we're pretty close to the triple digits, right? So let's just say we're at 98. Now, <clears throat> it may be hard for some uh, for some to see. I'm not too sure how it looks uh, online, but it should look okay. But if we go under 98 and our humidity, average is 80 let's say it's 75 you know today you know we're in this area right here where it's extreme danger i mean it's hot it's humid and i mean you can just feel it as soon as you walk out um and i remember i was doing some exercise uh and some uh physical activity outside cutting the grass and a few other things and i can just feel the sweat you know falling falling from my face being cold I was like, oh, my God, like my sweat is cold. It's not hot. It's just cold. And that's when I said, OK, let me go uh, inside. Let me get a cold drink of water or, you know, some uh, or something to kind of rehydrate myself. Now, me knowing, of course, the thirst mechanism and such, I do understand that. But, you know, sometimes when you kind of want to roll, you know, you kind of, you know, forget it. You kind of put these things aside. And I know it's happened to me. I, I can probably tell it's more likely happened to you. Yeah, definitely. Actually, just yesterday, uh, me and um, our associate director, uh, Jonathan Vasquez, we had we got a call that we were receiving a freight of uh, pallets of books to uh, our warehouse, and uh, it was kind of caught us off guard. We were expecting it within the next couple of weeks, but they sent us a they sent Jonathan a message on Monday that <clears throat> here yesterday at night in the morning. And we have to be there at night in the morning to be able to unload uh, these pallets of books. And so we rented a forklift, we rented a pallet jack, and we were there on time by the time the freight got there. And so we have to unload it ourselves. So uh, I was inside the freight, inside the 18-wheeler, the uh, hooking up the pallets for Jonathan to be able to pull them out and to be able to place them in our warehouse. It was something that we anticipated to take like maybe an hour, maybe a little bit over an hour. We ended up being there for over three hours and constantly moving, you know, in a freight that has no air conditioning where you're literally closed in. There's no breeze in there. And I remember when I was inside in the depths of the- And you're in a microwave. (laughs) You're in a microwave. And then of course, you know, guidelines, you know, we're wearing wearing our face masks 24 seven. So I remember being inside the freight for like a good 35 minutes straight. And then I remember stepping out slightly to the 
edge of the freight and a little bit of a breeze kind of hit me and it was a cold breeze and it kind of like knocked me off my feet a little bit i was like okay and i looked at my watch and i had my apple watch and i realized i had been there for 45 minutes and my mask was covered like drenched in sweat my body was drenched in sweat and i was like okay i've completely ignored my thirst mechanism i need to take a break i had yeah. a 40, I had two 40 ounce hydro flasks of uh, cold water with me because of that reason. I finished one whole hydro flask in one 15, 20 minute break and yeah. then went back into doing the other half of the freight. So it, the fact that it was so humid because it was so closed off and there was no way to have air circulating in there and then plus our heat and it's metal so it attracts heat and it, it was a dark freight as well so a darker color warmer color attracts more heat and our humidity it was just i felt like i was in an oven for the majority <laughs> of the time so i felt very very weak afterwards so uh yeah. i took and then i took not an energy drink but i took a, a gatorade with me as well they had a little bit of sugar and more electrolytes so i took that kind of as like uh my post workout kind of thing because it felt it felt like a workout so sure. i took it uh, I took a Gatorade that I had and I drank that to kind of replenish my sugars that I sweated off for those three hours that I was there. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I know my mom's going to hate that I'm going to mention this story, but she did the same thing where, you know, she said, hey, I'm going to do some gardening outside. And I told her, look, don't overdo it. You know, it's really hot outside. And, you know, and again, you're right. Once you kind of get going, you kind of put a lot of those those factors aside as far as the thirst mechanism goes, as far as, you know, your body telling you, you know, that it's, you know, time to take a break, time to drink some water, you know, something. And man, she just went at it, went at it, went at it. And this was, I don't know, this was like on a Friday or something like that. And, you know, that day, I mean, she just felt awful that night. She thought, I'm like, oh my God, here it is. The COVID is here for me. I said, no, no. I was like, mom, mom, it's not like, you know, you were outside, you didn't drink enough water. I saw what you were doing. Like, mom, I was, you know, doing my work inside and I told you not to, you know, and she said, oh no, it's okay. I didn't want to bother you. He's like, I know mom, I'm, you know, I was doing my, my work. And so I saw her kind of overdo it. So when she came in, I had to put the towels on her, you know, gave her, you know, within two days, uh, you know, she drank about three sweaters. Uh, of course, you know, diluted with some water. And I said, you know, so she's, she, and she was like, what happened? What happened? I was like, well, mom, uh, <clears throat> you should have watched my segment on hydration. No, I'm just joking. No, no I didn't tell her that. But I said, look, mom, uh, this is what happened. And, you know, of course, I explained it to her and she was like, wow. So it wasn't until maybe about Monday, you know, my mom's close to 60. So it wasn't until about Monday to where she started feeling, you know, a lot better. She's like, wow, I feel like myself now. But it took Friday night, Saturday and Sunday and of course, Monday came around and she felt a lot better. But, you know, I told her mom, you know, and this was maybe around May. So it wasn't as hot as it is now. So, you know, now I warn her like, hey, if we're going to go outside and exercise, you know, let's go after a certain time. If we're going to do this, then let's go after a certain time. So luckily yeah. it's been it's been working. So, you know, yeah, thankfully. It has with this, with this yesterday. I remember when I left the warehouse and I, and I went home, it was like around two like I got home like around two o'clock from being there since like nine in the morning to like around two o'clock um I got home and um me and my family are doing that if anybody leaves the house for any reason work uh go pick up food go into groceries but as soon as we get home we take a shower so and of course I was drenched in sweat so of course I was gonna take a shower so I remember I got home I took a shower and my mom was like do you want to eat do you want lunch and I was like just give me a tall glass of water that's the only thing I want right now <laughs> And I remember I got home and I had, because, you know, little dumb me, I didn't pay attention to my to my thirst mechanism. So uh, I, it took a toll on me. So as soon as I got home, you know, I had severe cotton mouth. I was so thirsty. I remember I drank, I refilled my 40 ounce hydro flask like three times yesterday in the span of a few hours. And I drank the entire thing. And then of course, because I didn't drink enough water, uh, I, did get, uh, so I didn't prevent soreness and cramps. So today when I woke up, literally right the next day after yesterday, uh, I woke up and as soon as I got up to get out from my bed, my back was so sore. And I was like, oh my God, this is what I get for not drinking enough water, not taking care of my body. And I was like, well, I know, I know I'm supposed <laughs> to let me have it because as soon as I tell this story, he's gonna get very, very mad at me because we're doing hydrate. <laughs> it happens, I learned from my mistakes. So today yeah. my body is very sore because again, <laughs> I take the precautions to hydrate my body and hydrate my muscles and get fluid in my body to prevent cramps and uh, soreness today. So I am 
feeling the aftermath of not taking care of my body with hydration yesterday. So learn from your mistakes is all I got to say. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And for, for those that maybe, you know, thinking to themselves right now, what is the thirst mechanism? I know I talked about that in part one, but I'll just mention it real quick. Now, the thirst mechanism is your first sign of dehydration. Uh, whenever you feel con mouth, your throat is dry, your mouth is dry, your tongue is dry, that's the first sign of dehydration. By that point, you've already lost at least 1% of your water, of your body in water weight, uh, or your water weight. So, 1%. So, I mean, that doesn't seem like a lot, but it truly is a lot, especially, you know, the way our body, uh, um, the, the way our body works, you know, with hydration along with water, that content throughout the, the body, right? The, the, the what's it called? The blood becomes a little bit thicker, right? Uh, and such. So, you know, we have to make sure that we listen to our thirst mechanism uh, before anything. And I know sometimes I myself, especially when I'm on a roll, I don't want to stop, but I have to tell myself I have to in order for me to keep on going. And it's, you know, it's worked for me so far. So, I know there's some times where I don't want to, but, you know, it's just always best to, so you can just continue on with your day. Now, if you guys could remember from the last time we talked, we had three types of sports drinks, right? The high isotonic, the hypertonic, and the hypotonic. Now, if you go to the grocery store, you'll see that these um, <coughs> sports drinks are put in such an order, right? You'll have your Gatorade, you know, in one lane, and then you have your Gatorade G2, which is half the sugar, then you have your Gatorade Zero, and just pay attention to that, and you'll see the same thing with Powerade and such. Um, for this segment today, I really just want to focus in on hydration. I don't want to talk about too much about um, energy replacement and such. Right now, it's very hot. Uh, right now, this is something that we really want to talk about. This is more along the lines of what I'll be uh, exp that I've been experimenting with uh, since the last time that we spoke, uh, and just getting into it. So we're going to be doing all hypotonic um, drinks today, and let's uh, let's meet the crew. And there it is now. <clears throat> I've cut down on quite a few. Like I know there was another G zero as well too. I know there's also Powerade zero. There's also a Pro, a Powerade Ultra, which is the competitor to Propel and a few others. So I narrowed it down to these guys, one for flavor, uh, one for uh, electrolytes as well too, and just overall availability. <clears throat> and these are the guys that are typically uh, available let's say in most CVSs, most grocery stores and such, Walmarts and HEBs. You'll, you'll find these every now and then in some, um, what do you say, some uh, convenience stores, right? Some gas stations, <clears throat> but there's a few that aren't very, um, that aren't very, uh, that, that you really can't find in, uh, in some of these uh, stores. And I'll talk about those in a little bit, which are the powdered drinks. Uh, although they are extremely, extremely potent as far as hydration, uh, I can't say enough about them, and I'll get into them in just a second. So <clears throat> let's talk about these hypotonic drinks, right? They have carbohydrates less than 6%, right? Your carbohydrates, your sugars. So it doesn't need to restore your energy, your sugar stores. It needs to make sure that you have, uh, that you're hydrated and you're hydrated properly throughout the day, right? Because if you're going to be drinking these drinks, typically you're going to be outside, you know, working some kind of vigorous activity, typically it would have to be some kind of activity, physical activity, uh, more than an hour <coughs> uh, of an hour or longer, right? So you want to make sure you remember that. If we're just sitting down as such, like right now, me and Valeri are, we're having a nice little chat and such. Uh, drinking a Gatorade uh, is probably not the best thing to get, you know, to do, even if it's a zero or such. Uh, probably not the best way to go. You know, there's other alternatives, you know, such as, you know, water, right? Always the best way to go, especially if you're not doing anything. But if it's going to be physical activity more than an hour or so, then yes, then we need to maybe think about some some other alternatives. So again, this is just a little recycled material, just a little refresher for everybody. It's been almost a month since we last spoke, right? So these four hypotonic drinks, they have 6% of, car of carbohydrates or less. From all of these, <clears throat> my favorite still is coconut water. Um, because of the amount of electrolytes it has. It has almost double the amount of electrolytes than both of those uh, competitors, uh, even with their new vitamin water, uh, Glacier Tundra, Tundra series and such, it doesn't have everything that coconut water has. And plus it's not natural either, right? And I know we had talked about this the last time, right? We compared it uh, with the Propel and the Ultra and the Zero and the G2 and such. Uh, but even so, the coconut water has reigned you know, supreme. Now, I'm not a big, coconut water drinker during my exercise activity. I like to drink it afterwards. It's almost as a, as a treat and such, but you can drink it during your activity because it does have some sugar, uh, some sugar content in there. It'll kind of give you some of that energy to keep on going. 
but typically if I'm looking for just pure, you know, just hydration, I love that after the fact. And again, I'll talk to you more about an experience I had with a certain food. Valeria, from these three, which ones have you drank and which ones do you prefer? I have <laughs> Gatorade, coconut water. That's it. I've never really, I've had friends that really like uh, vitamin water. Um, I'm not really a person that really likes flavor in my water. I'm just the kind of person that's just water and that's it. Um, occasionally, when I want to feel bougie, a little bit of lemon, uh, like lemon water. Um, but more than anything, I just like water and just water and that's it. Um, but my mom is a really big fan of uh, coconut water. Yeah, just just the other day, uh, like I mentioned at the past presentation, my mom is the kind of person that she'll buy uh, a whole coconut and she'll milk the coconut and uh, take out, which if you guys don't know what that means, it means poking holes in the coconut and draining the water. It's called uh, milking the coconut. And uh, she'll get, you know, that's as natural as it will get. You know, so, sometimes these coconut waters that are packaged uh, can have added flavoring, added sugars, added sodiums to them to kind of enhance the flavor to make them taste a little bit better. Um, but my mom really likes straight out of the coconut, natural coconut water. So um, because she drinks coconut water a little bit more, I have kind of gotten into drinking a little bit of coconut water. Also, one of my best friends, uh, Carlos, knows she loves the oh yeah coconut water, the ones that come in, in the can. I think they're like a, a dollar and a few cents at yeah. Walmart and mm -hmm. you can find them at the international section. And um, so because she drinks those a lot, I kind of started drinking them a little bit, but um, if I ever drink coconut water, it's because my mom brought home a coconut from the grocery store. But uh, mainly it's just water and Gatorade, like I said, whenever I have a very, very rigorous, rigorous workout, like yesterday, I drank the Gatorade right after um, we had to um, work at the warehouse. Absolutely. And, you know, with the coconut water, I mean, again, it's just one of my favorites. And Goya has actually been one of those that has held it down for so long. I mean, they've been around for so long <clears throat> and they've always been at a great price, you know, 89 cents, 99 cents, a dollar, as opposed to some of these other, you know, waters, uh, the Thirsty Buddha, Zyko, and a few others or whatever that are, you know, for a 15, a 16 ounce or a 20 ounce, you know, bottle, you know, they're charging $3 where Goya is still, you know, that price. So, you know, I support, uh, I love Goya and I, I support them all the way. I mean, they have some really good products. The second one that I actually like a lot is that Propel. Uh, it's very good. It comes in a variety of flavors. Um, third would probably be my vitamin water. And then the last would be uh, G zero. <clears throat> I'm not too sure why, but for, for whatever reason with Gatorades, I never truly, truly. And I know there's some people that are watching that feel the same way too. I never truly feel hydrated uh, with them as far as replenishing, you know, not replenishing the stores, but as far as, you know, feeling, you know, almost, you know, when you drink that coconut water, you get some sugar, which is fine. You don't get that with, with Gatorade G, uh, G series or zero. Uh, which is okay. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm just looking to get rehydrated. And I feel like I still don't get that, you know, with it. I feel more with Propel and coconut water than I do with uh, with G0, which uh, is kind of weird. I don't know. I know it's supposed to be, you know, to rehydrate yourself, but I just don't feel it with, um, with uh, Gatorade or Powerade. And I know some people can probably relate to that as well. <laughs> now, these Replenish your, they just replenish your sodium and your sugar levels. Yeah. Um, if anything, I feel like it, they kind of bring back those sugars for energy than actual hydration. I think that's kind of a little bit more of, at least for me, that's the effect that um, I see whenever it comes to Powerade or Gatorade. I kind of drink them a little bit more to kind of regain uh, my sugars and my sodiums that I lost mm -hmm. uh, rather than hydration. Um, like yeah. I said, that's why I always drink them after um, to replenish those. Yeah, uh, now now, I know there was someone here that said they didn't know that uh, coconut water is an energy drink. No, 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 it's not, it's not an energy drink. Uh, what I mean is when it uh, replenishes your energy stores, you know, your glucose and your glycogen, blood sugar and such, right, with the, the amount of sugar that they have. So it's not that it's an energy drink. It just gives you, you know, that energy that you use, right, the sugar, you know, that you need, you know, throughout the body. Now, these three guys have been, I've been experimenting with a lot. Um, Liquid IV, you actually had uh, talked to me about it right after our first uh, segment on hydration, which was awesome. And we had a lot of good feedback on it. Uh, we still receive questions from it. And of course, I try to go back and answer any questions. Uh, another one that I also like as well, too, is that Noon 
<clears throat> and I know they've been around for a while. I believe uh, a small packet like that is, uh, it comes with like it's these tablets that dissolve in water. And, um, you know, and I think I believe there's like 12 tablets in one of those and they're around like $6 and they're, they're available pretty much anywhere. Academies, Walmarts, uh, CVSs and such. And this last one that I just got into was LMNT, which is amazing. Uh, my brother, his friend actually ordered a, a packet of those from Amazon. And I'll talk about the pros and cons about them uh, in just a little bit. But you want to talk about rehydration. I mean, it's just like, wow, it's a, a complete explosion of just rehydration. And, you know, it's it's amazing. Again, just in a 16 ounce bottle, you pour that in there, you shake it, make sure it dissolves and you drink it. And I mean, I, I didn't know how much how much a lot of these powdered drinks have come a long way because before it was just propel you know, propel a little packet of water back in the day and now these packets and now of course that i've been looking at these ads have been popping up for a bunch of different ones so i don't know later on maybe we'll just do a segment just on powdered drinks to see what the difference is because there's just so so many of them and a lot of them have good information they have good vitamins and minerals as well too many minerals right a lot of electrolytes which is fantastic so let's dig into these three right here so we have LMNT, liquid IV, and we also have noon, right? And I break them down from sodium for all electrolytes, right? The sodium, the potassium, magnesium, calcium, and if they have phosphate, then I go ahead and add that as well too, which another one did. So when we look at these three and we start looking at these labels, right? A thousand milligrams of sodium for LMNT, which is fantastic, right? Because that's the number one electrolyte that we lose during sweat. Right. If we ever taste our sweat, I'm pretty sure everybody has. Right. Uh, it tastes very salty. Right. That's the sodium that's, you know, that's, you know, coming out. Right. We had the liquid IV, which has 500 milligrams of sodium. Then we had noon, which has 500 milligrams, uh, 100 milligrams, I'm sorry, of sodium. Then it breaks down to potassium and magnesium. Now, uh, the other two didn't have uh, any calcium. Uh, noon did. And then it goes into chloride, which noon had it as well, too. And then I go into like the pros and cons. Uh, and I, you know, I know we had talked about this already. And that's actually what I'm drinking right now. I have wa it's, uh, water, but I put one of those liquid IVs just to see how it works. You know, as far as me talking and such. Yeah, I don't I probably don't need it uh, for a segment as just talking and such. But it's always good to kind of stay, you know, rehydrated. And let me tell you, the liquid IV and LMNT have just been, you know, my favorites. Um, the only problem with the LMNT is just, <clears throat> it's a little bit pricey and they're hard to find. Now I say they're hard to find because you have to order them online or on Amazon. And it's unfortunate because you can't find these in some of these other stores, which again, if it was easy, it was like easier found or such, then I would say easily, I would always, you know, be drinking LMNT and they're not, I say they're pricey, but maybe they're a dollar 25 each package, right? Which isn't too bad. <clears throat> the liquid IV, however, is easily found and it's always available pretty much in your CVSs, your Walmarts and your Walgreens. Um, I'm not too sure if, um, if HEB carries them or not. I, ha I didn't see them there when I went, but of course I didn't go truly, truly looking, but I know I had seen them there at CVS and Walmart, um, which is nice. Now it may have half of the sodium but for what it has half on the sodium it makes up for the potassium uh, which is nice uh, and the noon has been around for a long time uh, great source of electrolytes uh, great for rehydration as well too uh, the only problem is i mean you only get uh, you know 12 tablets and uh, you don't get as much sodium or potassium and magnesium as you would like um, compared to some of the other two which again liquid IV element T are, you know, fantastic. And it was funny because you had mentioned earlier that you found liquid IV in a podcast. Well, element T was one of those things that my brother had showed me that um, he found in a podcast. He does a lot of competitive shooting. He's very good at it. And so are his buddies like, you know, that, that do that. And they're always looking for like a competitive edge, if you will. And within one of those podcasts, this uh, physical therapist started talking about what their Olympic shooting team uses. And, they were like their eyes just opened up and this was i believe either right after or right before our first segment that we did on hydration and from there he just started talking about it and he's like look i don't work for them this is not a plug for them this is just something that we use so i'm just giving you my experience with my shooters and myself to everybody else and from then we said okay let's give it a shot so i believe one of his friends ordered a pack of it and they started drinking it and for myself i was just like wow i mean it's just 
it's 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 amazing how much this little packet contains and what punch it actually gives as far as electrolytes. Um, have you tried any of these here? Do you have any experience with these, uh, Valeria, at the moment? I tried <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was watching um, a podcast. I think it was also immediately after, a few days after we had done our hydration part one segment. Um, I was watching, it wasn't uh, anything pertaining to health literacy. It was just um, a YouTube channel that I, that I follow. And we were talk they were talking about, you know, how they feel dehydrated after a night out drinking. So, um, and one of the... One of the members of the podcast mentioned that for many, he didn't even know that like he he struggled with rehydration the day after. You know, they went a little too hardcore drinking, and the, he mentioned that he was introduced to liquid IV from a friend, and um, it just so happened that because he was a person that he started drinking liquid IV, and it was a product that he really, truly, really loved. Um, they became uh, a sponsor. They became uh, sponsored from liquid IV. So he started talking about how. Usually he has to drink water the entire day uh, in order to feel rehydrated the day after that whole day of drinking water. And with one uh, packet of liquid IV, uh, he feels, um, I think, I, be I believe it's an equivalent of one bottle with liquid IV is equivalent to about three uh, regular sized water bottles. So yeah. he got hydrated faster. He had more yeah. energy. It has a flavor. So it tastes good because yeah. a lot of times, you know, people get bored of the taste of just plain water. I love it. I don't get bored of it, but some people do. Um, and he mentioned that it's very, very affordable. It's available at our CVSs. It has a lot of things like potassium. It has sodium. I believe it also has uh, vitamin C. And um, I believe it has, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it has enough, uh, I think it has a thousand grams of vitamin C, which is, I think, the equivalent of what uh, vitamin C intake that you're supposed to have in one day. So okay. it has a lot of really good benefits. And it's just one that you get all of that from just one bottle of water with one packet. You don't have to drink water or supplements for a whole entire day. But yeah, it was so crazy. And I believe I, I saw it, I looked it up, I ordered it. And then a few days later, I saw Mr. Paredes at uh, our blood drive at Hampton Arena, and we started talking about the possibility of a of a part two of the segment. Started brainstorming while we were helping out at the at the blood drive, and I mentioned to him about liquid IV. He was like, "That's so cool! I'm gonna order it." And we just got so excited. I feel like people were kind of looking at us weird because we were geeking out about um, hydration yeah. powders in the middle of a blood drive. But uh, it was it was really cool. It was really uh, weird, you know how things happen that that came up in a podcast having nothing to do with hydration, nothing to do with exercising or health literacy. It was just a podcast that I, that I uh, see and listen to uh, once a week, you know, just for fun and yeah. something like that a relevant topic that we were talking about currently came up. So I thought that was <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's that's the funny part is just, you know, we're geeking out over hydration and talking about that during the blood drive. And I know we talked about this this on the first segment, which was fun. And I know people are like, well, hydration, what's the big deal? Just drink water. But again, if you're out there and you're performing, you know, or you're doing these exercises or, or, or you're out there in the heat for longer than an hour of vigorous, you know, activity, you're going to need more than just water to replenish what you're losing, right? Those electrolytes that you're losing. Uh, even so, at the end of the day, you know, the sugar that you've been uh, also losing as well too, right? You need to replenish those energy stores as well. Uh, so for me, that's why I, I enjoy, you know, that coconut water at the end of the day, not really during or my workout or during my activity outside my physical activity, usually afterwards. But throughout that, now, you know, liquid IV, LMNT, uh, some Propel, um, things like that. And I know I had mentioned body armor as well, too. But after drinking it, after, you know, kind of, uh, you know, working with it and kind of experimenting with it, it wasn't one of my favorites as far as um, rehydration. So I know when I did the first segment, I was like, wow, it's amazing. You know, it's great. I know I've had it before, but now that it's been getting hotter, I, I tried it when I was doing, you know, physical activity outside and it didn't, it didn't seem to help. So, I mean, these are, and again, these are just my experiences, right? It could be different for everybody else. Um, but for this, pur these purposes or this purpose of doing, you know, this hydration segment, you know, for me, it was just something that didn't, that didn't help me. Uh, and the last thing I'll mention uh, between the noon and the element tea is that they're made with Himalayan salt. Now, as opposed to iodine salt, <clears throat> which the body uh, responds to uh, slightly different. Now, 
if if you will, the Himalayan salt is a little bit more minerally, uh, which sounds funny. And there's a lot more technical terms to, to get into it. Uh, but when you compare the flavor uh, to regular iodized salt, table salt, it's night and day. It's amazing. Uh, and Element T and Noon are the only ones that I've tested so far that have Himalayan salt. And that's just in big bold letters. And I made sure to add that as well, too. So for some of you guys that have had, you know, Himalayan salt compared to iodine salt, I mean, oh, my God, or regular table salt. And there's a huge difference uh, between those. So, again, these three have been fantastic. Um, again, I just wish Element T was easily more available, if you will, just as the Noon is and the Liquid IV is. But all my favorites for sure. Now, I got a little bit of flack uh, from uh, from some that were watching this. They said, hey, well, what about the Monster Hydro? And I, and I said, look, guys, <clears throat> the Monster Hydro isn't really something that like, oh, if you're going to be working out or, you know, whatever, that's not really something that you should really go to. And like, well, no, but it has the electrolytes. It has the bare, bare, bare minimum of electrolytes. It truly does. I don't recommend it when you're working out outside. I don't recommend it uh, when you're doing really anything. Um, but if you, I guess if you want to compare it to another one, and I think uh, my sister-in-law had talked about this. She said, hey, you should try the noon uh, caffeinated. It has a little bit of uh, caffeine in there to kind of get you up and going. Let's say, you know, you're kind of dragging along, you know, maybe after, you know, your session outside or such kind of need a little bit of a pick me upper as opposed to coffee or such. The noon actually has about 40 milligrams of caffeine per tablet. Uh, now, usually I just put it in a big old cup of uh, the 30 ounce cups that, um, that we had, I have in there with water and I'll just throw one in there and I just sip it th along the day or throughout, you know, that time. And it helps uh, as far as monster hydro goes, I don't recommend it, um, but it's something I wanted to compare the two, right? If you wanted, to, if you really wanted to compare apples to apples as far as hydration goes, uh, because the noon still has uh, all the electrolytes that the other regular noon has. You know, you have your, and they have different flavors, right? You have the regular, let me see, noon, and then you have the caffeinated noon, right? You'll see it usually has like a black top and you know black labeling and such. Um, but I guess if you really had to compare the two, if you really wanted to get into hydration, uh, I'd highly recommend the noon caffeine. One pill uh, or one tablet, I'm sorry, it dissolves in you know water, 16 ounces. I usually put it into, into a 32 or 30 and it works well. Uh, that's just me. So I, I know I had to mention that because I had a few uh, people you know ask me questions about it. So I just you know threw that in there. But you know, typically for me, water is you know still king. And it was funny because I was watching um, and I'm not too sure how many of you guys uh, watch Netflix or whatever or have Netflix. But uh, I was watching this uh, show, I guess, Zach Efron has. It's called Down to Earth. And I was barely in episode two and he started talking about water and how France has a certain water type uh, and what they, what process they go you know through water. So, you know, they make sure not to have like bottled water. They make sure to have water, you know, throughout the system and throughout their system, sorry, their city and how it's uh, used and utilized. And I thought like, oh, my God, like I'm, I'm going to talk about hydration tomorrow. And here is this segment tonight. So I stayed up a little late kind of watching it. It's about an hour long or such. Really cool because they went to a water uh, sommelier. I didn't know one existed, but it does. <clears throat> so this guy talks about different types of water from different parts of the earth. And I mean, it's almost like you would have a wine sommelier, you have a water sommelier. And there's some that have more minerals, that have some that have less minerals. There's some that are more alkaline, some more that are not. And it just blew my mind on how much I didn't know about water. I knew there was types, right? You have your filtered, you have your springs, uh, you have some, you know, water that has a lot of silica and such. Um, but I mean, when they got into it, I was like, oh my God, like, you know, I just started watching it and it kind of took me away. I didn't fall asleep until about 1.30 last night or whatever, but you know, it was fine. Uh, it's a very, very, very cool uh, segment. But again, for me, I typically just throughout my workout, throughout my day, it's just water. Water is always key, especially uh, spring water. Now, I know some of you guys say, well, there's no difference between filtered and spring water. Yes, there is. Absolutely. There's a huge, huge difference. I um, mean, you can just taste it. And I know some people that are probably watching this will agree, and some people will say no. I know you kind of nod your head. Uh, Valeria, do you have any any thought on that? I love spring water. Like you said, the taste can just almost 
taste the minerals that are inside of it. But purified water, you know, it's kind of in the name purified water. It has to be purified. So it has to go through a filtering system. And within that filtering system, of course, they make sure they take out any uh, bad minerals and bad uh, bacteria and stuff like that that are in the waters. But they also take out some natural minerals that come from the natural spring where the water comes from. Um, so I like to a little bit more, one, because of the taste. It tastes a little bit more uh, natural. And also because it does have a lot more uh, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that come with it because it doesn't go through the purifying process. But it's everybody, it's there. everybody says it's different. Everybody's beliefs is different. But I agree with you. I really like spring water a lot more than uh, purified water. Uh, absolutely. And again, and I, and I keep on mentioning this throughout, like, unless you're going to be doing an exercise or some kind of vigorous activity more than an hour, then you don't need, uh, then you need to drink something else. But if you're not, then, you know, you don't need any of that stuff. You can just drink some water and that'll be perfectly fine. I'm not saying go buy some Fiji or some Voss or some really expensive water. You don't have to do that. Okay. If you like spring water, that's fine. If you like filtered water, that's fine. <clears throat> if you like alkaline water, pH balance uh, water, that's fine too. But really just water is, you know, always, you know, superior to some of these other ones, unless again, you're going to be doing this exercise for longer than an hour. Now I'll, I'm going to get into my favorites right now from these guys that I tested and a few others. <clears throat> But uh, first and foremost, always natural spring water. Uh, I'm sorry, I know the LMNT guys uh, that recommended me. I, I like it, I enjoy it. The biggest con is the availability. It's not always available, but if it was, then for sure that would be on my favorite. And it, it still is my favorite. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say no. The noon with and without caffeine, uh, easily one of my favorites as far as hydration. I mean, I can feel that right then and there uh, immediately, which is great. Um, it has a small, small taste uh, or flavor, whatever it is, in case you just don't like water. If you want like a certain flavor, like blueberry pomegranate or something like that, they have them available. Coconut water, always at the end of my uh, whatever activity I do. And of course, uh, watermelon. Now I had talked about this last time, how there's some foods that are high in electrolytes. Watermelon is fantastic, you know, for that. Best food for hydration, hands down. Now, I'll tell you about the experience I had I was working outside um, again, you know, working outside, doing some stuff, cutting some trees and, and whatever. And I knew again, I didn't I, I didn't, you know, think about my thirst mechanism. I, I totally bypassed it. Didn't, wasn't even thinking about it. Well, uh, and I was like, man, I'm really, really thirsty. After I finished, I'm like, man, I'm really thirsty. And I just felt very drained, kind of like how you felt, how you were telling me about it. And I said, you know what? Let me I was like, I know we. I just bought some Sunday and I just cut it up earlier that day earlier that week or whatever it was and i had it in the fridge so you know i just go to the fridge and luckily i had already a bowl like ready to go and sure enough i mean oh my god the first bite that i had and this was kind of closer to like midday i was probably like midday about maybe you know two or three in the afternoon i was kind of finishing up already uh, i muscled through the heat or whatever and i had my first bite of like watermelon a little cube and oh my god it's almost like i had like this almost euphoric uh I don't know, I guess uh, feeling almost it's like, man, I had like, I can taste like the sugar. I can taste the rehydration in my mouth. I mean, it was just, you know, crazy. Right. And I know right now is the season, right? It's, you know, the watermelon is 92%, you know, water, which is fantastic, has sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium. So it has the electrolytes that we need. Um, so why don't we utilize it? Why don't we eat more, you know, watermelon at only, you know, 47 calories a cup. I mean, why not? And that was just something that's just changed. Um, this happened a few weeks ago and that's something that, you know, just changed uh, my habits, if you will. Uh, I'll drink some water, of course, you know, all throughout, but then I'll have like a nice, like at least one or two bowls of watermelon, you know, a day, probably more than likely one, but, you know, throughout, you know, as I'm talking, as I'm doing, you know, research, if I'm, you know, you know, class or, you know, whatever. So I always have a watermelon. That's actually what I have up right here. I have the yellow and I have the red uh, watermelon. For those of you that have never had a uh, yellow, uh, yellow watermelon, I mean, it's fantastic. Um, it has a, a little bit of a sweeter taste uh, to it. Uh, and it gets that yellow pigmentation because it doesn't have that, uh, this pigmentation called uh, lycopene. And it gives it that color and it's a little bit sweeter. So if you enjoy, again, uh, you know, eating watermelon, if you're out there working out or whatever and doing your exercise, your activities, whatever, a nice bowl of watermelon at the end of the day uh, would definitely help out uh, quite a bit, which is cool. Um, 
again, I'm not too sure how, 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 um, how thrilled you are about watermelon, but you know, I certainly am. So let's continue with these next ones right here. Sorry about that. There we go. The other two that are really good, honeydew watermelon, cantaloupe, pretty much has all of the same um, uh, properties as the red watermelon, water, red watermelon and yellow watermelon have as well too. Uh, pretty much the same amount of sodium, sugar and such. Again, I usually like to have this kind of at the end of the day to kind of replenish some of those stores that I've lost, uh, but that's just me. Uh, again, this is a little bit of a recycled material, right? Hydration tip. If you don't know how much water to drink, right? We already have the guidelines uh, in ounces and liters and, and in cups as well too. Uh, a good uh, number as well to have about two to three cups of water uh, per day, per hour. So in case you may forget, you know, eight ounces, 16 ounces, you know, per hour is always, you know, kind of good to, to have throughout, you know, especially if you feel that thirst mechanism, definitely have a cup of water. Uh, that'll help out a lot. Tips for the summer heat. Um, I'll always stay hydrated, obviously, right? Watching these segments, uh, for sure. Pack a water container, cold, uh, with some cold fluids in there. You know, we'll wear some clothes that are light in color, uh, nor dark colors, right? Uh, wear clothes that are loose and breathable, and then uh, wear a breathable hat, you know, keep your face cool. Just by wearing a hat, uh, sombrero, or whatever it might be, you may look a little funny, but, you know, keeps your face 20 degrees cooler. Uh, I, myself, always have, like, this hat. If I'm, like, working outside, I have, like, this buoy hat that I use a lot, uh, which is awesome. I got it for me fantastic i love it uh that it really really helps out you know a lot and of course it just has your recommended da daily uh, allow dietary allowances for electrolytes and that just goes into all of those um that's just something that i wanted to add in add into the segment as well as i did with the first segment so if this is your first time into the segment i highly recommend going to part one or segment one and you'll be able to kind of watch some of the things that i've kind of already gone over that you'll get a good idea of what i'm talking about now yeah, awesome. And like I mentioned in the beginning, the part one session is available either on our Facebook page in our video posts or also available on our website, softtextliteracycoalition.org. Um, and just look for our Health Literacy for Kids tab and you'll be able to see all of our past health literacy presentations. You'll be able, you can click a link that will take you to the video itself. And you can also click a link that will let you view and download the PowerPoint that we use during the presentation. So if you feel like it, it is a topic that you feel that maybe um, your coworker, your siblings, your family members, a friend can really use that information, you, they have all of that stuff available to them at their fingertips at our uh, website. And uh, thank you so much, Mr. Paredes. It's always a blast being able to, uh, you know, virtually see you, uh, you know, on my laptop. You know, it's, it's been a while. Of course, I saw you at our, at our blood drive, but it's uh, super cool. Something that we were talking about, you know, off off live. Technically, we were still on camera, but off live, we were talking about, uh, you know, we took a two week hiatus because, you know, transition between summer one and summer two, because I like to, you know, remind people, Mr. Butler and Mr. Figueroa are current uh, active professors at UTRDV. So apart from doing this, they are teaching full uh, lecture courses online now. So uh, they are, they do this for us on their free time, which Again, I can't stress enough, thank you so much for doing this. They do this for fun, they do this uh, for free, they do this um, kind of as a passion to be able to share the message and share the information to people in our community. So uh, you guys are rock stars and I really, really, we all really, really appreciate you guys' helping y'all's time to be able to educate our community on this stuff. Yeah, yeah, well, look, honestly, I mean, it's fun to, you know, go back to some of the basics and talk about, you know, wellness, health, hydration, physical activity, uh, because depending on what semester it is, we don't always get a chance to go back to the basics. So for me, it's great to go back to the basics, talk about it. And honestly, there's, you know, new material that comes out. There's new products that also come out, right? All the products I have more here on the, on the right side of my, myself. Um, and it's exciting. Because, you know, it's just, you know, a new uh, something else new, you know, to learn something else to put, you know, on uh, on your back drawer. Say, you know what? I talked about this or we went over this and maybe not everybody, um, you know, 
our, our degree where I was in exercise science, you know, health and human performance. And not everybody goes to that. Not everybody's taking that course. So maybe this is just something that piques their curiosity as far as hydration, as far as products, what's good, you know, what's bad, what's better, you know, what's new out there, what can we use and utilize? And that's just, you know, an honor for me to come on your platform or your guys' platform and talk about some of these products and some of the things that I know uh, to you guys. So it's actually a pleasure for me to be on here with you guys. So I do appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much um, for everyone that's on here. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure to tune in next week on Thursday. We're going to be back. We're going to be starting our regular programming up a little bit again. So next week we will be talking with uh, Mr. Figueroa, and we're going to be talking about you know some cardiac diseases and some ways to help and uh, prevent or kind of help deal with these kinds of diseases in our uh, community. You know, we're going to be within these next couple of weeks, we're going to be talk talking about topics or touching topics such as, you know, um, diabetes, um, heart attacks, um, any type of other, you know, metabolic and cardiac uh, syndromes that we, it's a big thing that we see in the Valley. And a lot of times, kind of same thing with hydration, a lot of people don't really have access to information, proper and correct information on how to go about, you know, either treatments or maintaining or even prevention for these type of things. Um, like Mr. Paredes mentioned, we know this information because it was a study that was a requirement as a part of our degree, but it's kind of something that has become a norm in our community, and especially down here in the Valley. And um, if you aren't in this degree, in this career, um, oftentimes you don't have enough information about these different topics. And so um, me and Mr. Baez and Mr. Figueroa talked about it uh, a few weeks before when we were talking about these new segments that we wanted to come about. And we just feel it's something that's really, really important to stress because it's such a normality in our community. And just, I mean, we do all this stuff just to be able to help you guys and to be able to provide information and knowledge and educate you guys on these things um, without having to take a full semester of a course. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so keep a lookout for that. Uh, once again, thank you so much <laughs> for everyone that tuned in. Thank you, Mr. Paredes, and we will see you guys next week. All right. Thank you, guys.